Recently, I was watching a video by Canadian Prepper, and part of that video showed uh, taped comments from Elon Musk about artificial intelligence. And it got me kind of thinking. I think we all know who Elon Musk is, uh, you know, his involvement with uh, founding Tesla and SpaceX. But lately, he has been known more for his comments about the danger of AI or artificial intelligence. I think the quote I liked best is, with AI, we are summoning the demon. And then he went on to explain how, you know, when you see the movies and they have the holy water and the pentagram and everything, and they think they'll be safe when they summon the demon, but they never are. Well, we could be under the same thing for artificial intelligence. So I wanted to learn a little bit more about it. Now, Stephen Hawking went on to say, we wouldn't be able eventually to compete with AI and it could be the end of the entire human race. Ooh. So do we need to fear AI? Well, if you watch Hollywood movies very much, yes. <laughs> or read science fiction. Um, the one that comes to mind first is, of course, Terminator. You know, uh, humanity had developed something called Skynet which was supposed to make the world a safer place, but Skynet somehow became self-aware and its prime directive was to keep the world safe. And so if someone was trying to destroy it, i.e. shut it off, it would need to get rid of that annoyance so it could go on with its prime directive. Well, its creators felt, oh, it's becoming too powerful, so they wanted to shut off Skynet and so instead it retaliates against them and Skynet was kind of like a in the cloud if you think of now and in a lot of other devices the Internet of Things including Terminator androids and military bots and military satellites so just showing what is wrong uh, or what could be wrong with AI if something like that happened so I want to decide is AI something we have to fear? Is it just the normal hysteria that always happens when we have new technology? Let me give you an idea. Uh, I read a really interesting article in Slate entitled, Don't Touch That Dial, A History of Media Technology Scares, From the Printing Press to Facebook. And I thought I'd share it with you because, uh, well, let me read it first. Similar concerns arose in the 18th century when newspapers became more common. The French statesman, Mr. M is how I'm going to pronounce it, rallied against the fashion for getting news from the printed page, arguing that it socially isolated readers and detracted them from the spiritually uplifting group practice of getting news from the pulpit. A hundred years later, as literacy became essential and schools were widely introduced, the Corumdans turned against education for being unnatural and a risk for mental health. An 1883 article in the weekly medical journal, The Sanitarian, argued that schools, quote, exhaust the children's brains and nervous systems with complex and multiple studies and ruin their bodies by protracted imprisonment, unquote. I love that part about protracted imprisonment for school because many of us felt that way, especially in high school. But the article went on to give a view from Douglas Adams. And again, if you read science fiction or saw the movie, you might be familiar with The Hitchhiker Guide to the Galaxy, which he is, I think, the most famous for. So this is a quote from the article. The writer Douglas Adams observed how technology that existed when we were born seems normal. Anything that is developed before we turn 35 is exciting. And whatever comes after that is treated with suspicion. Okay, maybe there's a lot of truth to that. And the problem is we're all just getting to be old fuddy-duddies <laughs> and are a little bit of scared of new technology. A lot of IT experts are really scared of this. They really are warning about the dangers of AI. And a while ago I had done a video and I will put a link here, um, but it was based on this book. And in this book, that is, you know, dangers of AI is one of the possible problems in the future that passed muster by the criteria presented in this book. But I couldn't help thinking, 
you know, do we fear most what we know most about? Um, I mean, to give you an example, uh, I'm more in the medical field, and what do I fear most? A pandemic, because I know what kind of uh, terrible, terrible chaos and death it could cause. And I've wondered, do people in the military fear most uh, nuclear weapons? And people in IT fear their own technology. I'm not sure, but just a thought. So why is it a concern? Well, here's another quote from Stephen Hawking. Artificial intelligence would take off on its own and redesign itself at an ever increasing rate. Humans who are limited by slow biological evolution couldn't compete and we would be superseded. I guess that's unless you believe in Kurzweil's uh, transhuman theory where somehow we're going to kind of meld, be part machine, part human and be immortal. AI encompasses machine learning and it uses very, very large data sets. And it is now to the point where some AI is being developed that um, you're a machine or appliance, whatever, down here, and you learn something new, you send it up to the, um, I call it the master brain, uh, but anyway, something in the cloud, and it says, wow, that's a good idea. And it just sends it back to all the other units that are exactly the same. And over time, um, AI can evolve that way in the future until there's so many layers of changes that humans won't know how it got the way it got. So, could that be a real danger? Sure. So when I was researching the subject, I found a site called The Conversation. And there was a posting there by an actual AI researcher. And I found it very interesting. His name was Aaron Hintz, H-I-N-T-Z-E. Anyway, he had four fears. And let's go into each one of them. So the first one was fear of the unseen. And uh, we can either go to a science fiction book that was written by Arthur C. Clarke, or the movie, again, we're going to Hollywood, uh, 2001 Space Odyssey. But let's think about HAL. You know, HAL was developed uh, to help those interstellar space travelers, and instead it was trying to eliminate each one. Something was wrong in its programming. And it's really an example of something that fails from unintended consequences. And you can think of the space shuttle, even the Titanic, uh, Chernobyl. All of these were very, very complex systems and a lot of different people working on it. Each person probably really knew their part, those engineers, but there was an incomplete understanding of the whole and how the whole worked together. So this is one of the worries that there could be unintended consequences for the development of AI. And remember, to err is human. <laughs> so to think that there wouldn't be some erroneous consequences is rather naive. Fear of wrong social priorities. And I probably spent my research the most on this because it's kind of what fascinates me about the subject. And there's a fear that automation and AI will replace jobs. What happens to the people that are displaced? Is this a true worry or not? The World Bank President, Jim Yong Kim, has pointed out that automation technology threatens 69% of jobs in India and 77% in China. Researchers at the University of Oxford's Martin School conducted a study in 2013 of over 700 U.S. job types and concluded that nearly 50% of jobs will ultimately be susceptible to full machine automation. Wow. Well, and I think we expect uh, automation and AI to take over a lot of the blue collar job. Tesla, the electric car company, for example, uses 160 robots to assemble 400 cars per week. Um, robotics are a focal point of China's Made in China 2025 plan, and it set national goals of producing 100,000 industrial robots a year and having 150 robots in operation for every 10,000 employees by 2020. It's predicted that 77% of jobs in China will be vulnerable 
to robots or AI replacement. And you know, most of us are familiar with outsourcing now. I know in my industry, medical billing, most companies outsource a lot of their work to people in India. Personally, I believe in keeping the work here in the US and I actually hire local people to do the work. But you know what's now replacing offshore work? It's no shore work. And that is to incorporate AI and technologies in your company here in the US so you don't have to send the work overseas but you also don't have to hire people to do the work. A recent McKinsey study concluded that 49% of the time workers spend on their jobs could be supplanted by automation just by using technology that already exists. And I don't know if you've ever heard of Morvisex paradox. This was a discovery by AI experts in the 80s um, that really said Robots can find difficult things easy and easy things difficult. And it gave an example of, you know, uh, a computer. And, and when I say robots, it also means computers, of course. A computer can beat a chess champion. But if you really wanted to wash those chess pieces and get them really clean, a human is much better. Now, I don't know if you can see where I'm going with this, but this would mean that many of the what we consider higher level intellect jobs might be gone and remaining are the lower level jobs. Think about this. There is software for lawyers now that does a lot of the uh, work that researchers used to. Uh, surgeons are already using robotic arms and devices in surgery and eventually could a surgeon be replaced by an android? Possibly. Um, and could your diagnosis be done by a, a diagnosis computer instead? Because it has, like this, the ability for all data banks out there for medicine. Could that replace a doctor? There is a program called Quill for journalists um, that just kind of pulls data in from various sources if you uh, determine what data you want and it writes part of the article for you. So eventually, journalists could be replaced. And the interesting thing about this is, you know, we've often heard about blue collar type workers revolting. Think of the, the Luddites, right? For the Industrial Revolution. But if this all happened, maybe we would have a white collar revolt. So you combine this with the youth unemployment in Europe. Um, I think in Australia, there's only one posting for every six skilled worker. Uh, the trend toward for nations to be nationalistic instead of looking at globalization. And, you know, just the overall discontent with economies. And it really makes you wonder what will happen when AI and other technologies really become incorporated. Because what happens is the people that own the machines basically will be wealthy. The rest may be out of a job. Now, of course, other jobs would be created. We always look at doom and gloom when new technology comes out. Maybe this won't happen. And to remember, if there's somebody out producing the goods or the knowledge, they need someone to buy it. So you still need to have uh, a population that has money to purchase goods. But what people are worried about is that it will hollow out the middle class and just leave the upper class and the lower class. And you know, I was just watching a video this morning uh, about Finland and they have an experiment with 2,000 people who are unemployed. And instead of giving them unemployment or the dole as they call it over there, um, they will get a universal common wage. And maybe we'd have to come up with something like that if there was a lot of people unemployed. I don't know. It really might be a whole different type of economy. And I'm combining two of the worries from the article in one, and that is fear of misuse and fear of a nightmare scenario. So let's go to Mr. Musk again. If we recreate some digital superintelligent that exceeds us in every way by a lot, it's very important that it be benign. The frightening alternative is that we'd one day find ourselves living under despotic control 
with the dictator, in this case, being an AI-infused robotic overlord. Uh, I can see the movie there, right? Robotic overlord. Hmm. And over a, in 2015, over a thousand AI experts wrote a letter to ban AI in certain types of weapons. It was an open letter, uh, warning of military artificial intelligent arms race, and a call for ban on offensive autonomous weapon. And that made me again go to my science fiction <laughs> background um, and think of berserkers. Uh, there's something called von Neumann machines and that's what we call them today but that is uh, machines that can self-assembly and once you do that they can make their own machines and, and improve the generations as they go. Well and the berserker uh, analogy, I don't believe it was humans, I was believe it was another race had created these type of uh, war weapons to destroy their enemies and instead it got turned on them and the berserkers were wiping out planets, whatever. So you have to be careful what you develop. The other thing they were trying to point out was that, you know, you think of the arm race with uh, nuclear weapons. Well, in nuclear weapons, uh, you do need expensive components and Plutonium is not easy to find on the open market. But AI, you just need a bunch of talented programmers. So again, I go to my science fiction background and I think of Isaac Asimov and his three laws of robotics. One, a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. Two, a robot must obey orders given it by human beings, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. And three, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Well, that sure won't happen if we end up uh, having berserker type weapons in the military. That could be a very scary outcome. You know, the other thing, if you have this huge super intelligence, which eventually it'll be super data bank anyway, maybe it won't be what we consider intelligent, but the idea is, why should it keep us on the planet? So what I kind of thought of is, let's live our life to treat our planet well and to treat each other well. And then maybe that super intelligent overlord will say, hey, they're worth keeping, um, at least as pets. This is proper potpourri saying, love to know what you think about the dangers of AI. Is it overblown? As always, please subscribe and share the knowledge. Thumbs up if you like this video.